VPI Pet Insurance presents Ask the Vet with Dr. Justine Lee from Pet Poison Helpline. Did you know that last spring, Pet Poison Helpline received more than 2,000 calls about yard-related poisonings? Well, I know that azaleas are toxic for my dog, Tucker, so I keep them completely out of the garden. Good. In fact, there's over a thousand species of rhododendron, including azaleas, and they contain something called a gray anatoxin. It only takes as little as one or two leaves to cause a poisoning in a dog, so you definitely want to keep them out of reach. Some of the signs that we see when a dog gets into rhododendron include things like vomiting, drooling because they're nauseous, mm -hmm. diarrhea, or even heart arrhythmias. In large ingestions, we can actually see neurologic signs like tremors or seizures, and in severe ingestions, it can be fatal. So you want to keep azaleas and rhododendrons out of reach. Absolutely. I, I dug up a bunch of them when I first moved into my house. Smart move. Mm -hmm. When in doubt, always dig up poisonous plants. When I moved into my new house, I dug up all the lilies in the yard, and my cats are indoors, but I know how toxic lilies can be. Of course, before digging up every single poisonous plant in your yard, check with a veterinarian or pet poison helpline first. There are some plants that we worry about, but especially if Tucker's outside in the neighborhood, he can be exposed to other poisonous plants that aren't in your yard. That's a really good point. So what kind of poisonous plants should I be looking out for? Another one that we worry about are spring bulbs. Really? Things like tulips and daffodils, mm -hmm. it's not actually the greens or the flowers themselves that are poisonous. It's this thin onion skin layer of the bulb that results in vomiting and diarrhea. Okay. Certain types of spring bulbs, like the narcissus, are even more poisonous. They cause vomiting, they cause diarrhea, they can cause heart arrhythmias, and even difficulty breathing. We know how Labrador retrievers can be chow hounds. <laughs> yes. Pet Poison Helpline had one dog that ingested 25 spring bulbs. He dug them up out of the ground, and we sent him into the veterinarian, and thankfully he did fine. He ended up getting x-rays done, and he was treated with IV fluids and anti-vomiting medication. But you can see that dogs will dig up and eat almost anything. Oh my gosh, that is so scary. It is. OK, well now, what about my cat Daisy? Are there any plants that I need to be looking out for for her? Great question. One of the biggest poisonous plants that we worry about in cats are lilies. Mm -hmm. Things like Easter lilies, Asiatic lilies, mm -hmm. some species of day lilies or show lilies, even tiger lilies. One or two leaves can cause severe fatal acute kidney failure in cats, so you want to keep it out of reach. In fact, lilies are one of the most common flowers that we see used in bouquets. Mm -hmm. They're inexpensive, they're fragrant, they last a long time, and the concern is if you can't recognize or identify plants well, I actually don't recommend that bouquets ever be brought into the house if you own a cat. Even if Daisy walked by and brushed against the pollen of a lily and then she grooms it off her fur, it can cause acute kidney failure. Wow, you know, I thought that because Daisy was an indoor cat, I didn't have to worry about lilies, but I never thought of those bouquets. That's right. true. Gotta get those lilies out of them. Another plant that we worry about, especially since you live in the warm area, mm -hmm. is the sago palm. Okay. It grows commonly in warm areas outside. Right. And it sometimes even is used as a bonsai plant. The thing that we worry about sago palm is the fronds of the fern, the fruit, the seeds are all poisonous and result in severe vomiting, diarrhea, and potentially irreversible liver failure. Another plant that we worry about is calancho. Calancho is really commonly found in the supermarket. Yeah. It's got really thick, succulent leaves, really beautiful pink or yellow flowers that are all bunched together. Yeah. The problem is if your cat or dog bites it and ingests it, it can cause severe cardiac arrhythmias. So you want to keep that out of reach. The last plant I worry about is oleander. Oleander is an evergreen-like shrub, mm -hmm. grows in warm locations along the highway, mm -hmm. California and Hawaii. And the concern is the flower, even the branch, the leaves, all parts of the plant are really poisonous. They cause vomiting and diarrhea, but the worst thing that they cause is actually potentially fatal cardiac arrhythmias. In fact, as little as 10 leaves can actually kill a thousand pound cow or horse. So you can imagine how toxic it can be to dogs. When in doubt, if you think your pet's ingested a poisonous plant, always call in case of emergency and get veterinary advice. Keep emergency numbers posted for quick reference, or better yet, pre-program your cell phone so you can call for life-saving medical advice immediately. Pet Poison Helpline is available 24-7 and is a quick phone call away. It's also a good idea to have a VPI pet insurance policy in case of emergency. That way, when the unexpected happens, your only concern should be getting Tucker and Daisy the appropriate medical care that they need. And with VPI, you're financially prepared for the unexpected. Such a great point. It's just so important to just be prepared when danger comes looking for your pet. That's right.
If you suspect that your pet may have ingested something harmful, seek immediate veterinary advice. Pet Poison Helpline is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, to help you through any pet poisoning emergency. Are you prepared for unexpected veterinary expenses? VPI Pet Insurance provides a financial safety net for all kinds of pet emergencies. Get a no-obligation quote for the pet insurance recommended number one by veterinarians.